Uh, hi, I've got a question to Doug. It's about Matisse's death in Suburban Night. Well, spoilers! <laughs> I think everybody saw okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but my question is, well, did Bago, the, did he never want to play Matisse again because he's sick of that character? Or was it just for the plot? Uh, I mean, like, Bago's really weird because one day he'll be like, I'm sick of Matisse. I'm just like, yeah, no, no more, no more. And then like, I'll be like, you know, I'm thinking about Matisse's backstory. <laughs> I think he should have a past. Like, he was dead and he was resurrected. And I am like, you know, Third Lantern or something like that, you know? And, you know, so he'll just flip flop back and forth. So I'm like, okay, I'll just kill him off. <laughs> no, I mean, it was like we were actually going to do it in Kagasia, uh, but just as sort of as a throwaway joke. And then, you know, when we decided to sort of have people be invested in the third year, we said, okay, well, that's a good way to end it then, you know, sort of kill off my teeth. So it just depends on what mood he's in. Sometimes he's sick of it, sometimes he really loves it. So it just, just varies. No, I, I, th I think at first he was kind of afraid that he was only going to be known as Mati. That was the only character that he was ever going to do. So I think he didn't like it at first because he thought every time everyone saw Saw Bargo, they would, they would just go, oh, Monty. But he's done so many great roles and performances in your videos over the years. Actually, my favorite one was when he did Laurie Prince uh, on the news, uh, which it's, it was just one bit in a, in a video. You know, he goes, uh, goes no, Laurie, this is how they work. And it was a great part. So I think he, he's, he's actually uh, become very, uh, he, he, he likes doing videos now. He likes performing. And so I think he's really embraced Monty as a character. So he enjoys it. Yeah, yeah, he's got a lot better, right? So. Next question, please. <laughs> Maybe from here. Just wondering. Hello. Uh, my question goes to Spoonie. Okay. Uh, have you heard about a new game called XCOM? <laughs> <laughs> destroy my shirt, it's the only one I have right now. <laughs> yes, I've heard of it. Um, honestly, I, I honestly, um, I don't know if, if Europe got this. Have you played the original XCOM? Yeah. yeah? Okay, so you have. So you know my pain. You, you, know, you know how upset I am over this fact that this game essentially now rips off its Mass Effect. If you've seen the demo, um, I, I saw the demo, it, it, it started as a shooter. And then they, I think they realized everyone was really angry that it wasn't a strategy game. And so they're like, well, we need to add strategy elements to it. So they did acknowledge that they wanted to make it more strategic. And then they just said, okay, well, we're going to have teammates. We're going to give you two teammates. And you have a little radial wheel that you assign orders to. It's Mass Effect, which is better, but it's still not XCOM. And so that was just me. And it, it really is a bummer when you take such a well-known and beloved game, and then you completely do everything different. Um, it's not very good. <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, you know what? It, it may come out, and it may be great, and I'll look like a fool. It, it wouldn't be the first time, but uh, I'll just, I, that was just my initial impression looking at this. I was just sitting there like, just stewing. I was like, oh no, this is terrible. I hate this. I was like, I was just wanting to kill that guy who was doing this video. He's like, he's ruining XCOM. I was like, I played that game a dozen times as a kid, you know, I played through that so many times, and, yeah, <laughs> anyway. Okay, first of all, I have a question for all of you, a more serious one. How did you end up doing what you're doing? And second question for Doug, when are you going to give up that hat? <laughs> <laughs> the joke's on you, this is an EMC hat. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hat that I just wear when I go to whatever. Oh, I'm sorry, like they all know. They're just disgustingly <laughs> eerie. Uh, no, I've actually given up the NC hat like a long time. The first one I lost, and then the others I just eBay. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's the answer to my question. Let's go down the line for the other one. How we get it? To... Okay, so uh, I going to do this mostly through the Angry Video Game Nerd, which I think like was my, my biggest inspiration. Mostly because like the guy was demonstrating something that you could be funny on your own while having like something to base your work on, like a review, something that you, people could relate to, well, with the nostalgia factor, but not only that, like being an urban, being like an anime fan, like a genre movie fan, 
all that. And so uh, when I saw, I was, a, and then my girlfriend introduced me to Dead Guy with Glasses on YouTube. And then when I was, there was a trailer for the Dead Guy with Glasses website. I thought, okay, you know what? Maybe I can do this because they said that they were head hunting really to get new contributors. And I think, you know what? Like nobody, I grew up like you guys are from Europe, so maybe some of you grew up with Atari ST and Amiga. Like or Commodore 64 and all that, and that's a big part. Like you know, in the Europe, uh, European like gaming background. In the 90s, you had an Amiga, you had a 16-bit, 32-bit computer, and nobody was speaking about these like in the um, hardcore gaming, like you know, nostalgic shows. And I wanted to feature games that I grew up with, so that's how I came back, uh, came up with my show. That uh, Mike Michal, the the guy behind the whole website. Uh, he's not him, but <laughs> it's, it's a guy in, uh, in our shadows, uh, doing a great job. Uh, and he's, he's a very good gamer, he's a very hardcore gamer, and, um, and so he really liked my show because he was featuring games that he didn't know about, and that's how I came to be full-time producer on uh, that game of lessons. But apart from that, my training is really as a teacher, actually. Okay, so might come as a shocker, but I actually don't remember how I decided to make videos. <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, when people watch my videos, they say, well, it's kind of weird and random. Well, it's how, like, I decided to make videos. It was a real decision, it was really random. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. No, yes. um, no, for me, it just sort of started off as a hobby. Um, it, it just something to do for, I started with the five-second movies, and I really caught on. I'm like, oh, I, I want to see if I'm still playing, like, me as a person, I'm funny. So I started doing nostalgia critics and sketches, and it really caught on. Um, but then, yeah, Mike Michelle came to me, he said he's starting this company called Channel Awesome, he says, I love your stuff, it gets lots of views, you know, we, we love to uh, uh, see you get paid for this, and I says, no one's making money on the internet, you know, like, you can't do that. And uh, he says, no, no, we really can, we can, so, you know, uh, they brought me on board, and sure enough, you know, this is my full-time gig, and uh, I, I owe everything to him, man, because I, I wouldn't be doing this if, uh, uh, if he didn't come along, so that, that's the short version of it. Um, when I started, I started writing uh, blog posts on movies, and so um, I was on a forum, and uh, the first, the Star Wars, uh, The Phantom Menace had just come out, and, uh, well, that's, that's, this is the funny, your reaction is really funny, because at the time, everyone loved that movie. Everyone did. Everyone, when, when The Phantom Menace came out, everyone walked out of there going like, that was brilliant. Jar Jar, that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> It was, if you look at the reviews, the, the, the movie critics, the, what? Yeah, they're not that bad. The reviews aren't that bad. Yeah, the reviews are actually very positive. Roger Ebert, uh, if you remember, famous American movie critic, loved Phantom Menace. They all did. I hated it. And I posted, I made a blog post just destroying this movie. Just, just oh, terrible. Like, doing my usual angry stuff. And so, um, I got a lot of controversy behind this. Uh, people were following me, like, arguing with me, saying I was wrong, I was stupid, I just hate Star Wars, it's for kids. And so that, I started making these written posts to make my friends laugh. And that's, it kind of transitioned into videos later on, where I was just really trying to make my friends laugh by getting really angry playing a really balls-hard game. You know, so I was playing The Adventures of Bayou Billy, and people were, were really, really laughing watching me lose my mind playing this impossible game. And so that was really it. And so where it really got big was Final Fantasy VIII, where, again, Final Fantasy VIII, you may love it or you may hate it, almost everyone loves it, but nobody had ever come right out saying, like, this game is terrible. And then people were, like, horrified. Just, mm. <laughs> he said, what? About, about Final Fantasy, but everything Final Fantasy is good. And, like, people, I don't think they liked me, but it was kind of like they wanted to see what crazy shit I had to say next, because this guy is out of his mind, you know? So what, the, the, what really got me started to know I really wanted to do this for as long as I could was the hate mail I got for Final Fantasy VIII, where all of a sudden I was doing videos and people were kind of watching them, but not really. They were like, oh, Bayou Billy was fun, The Thing was fun, uh, Robin Hood was fun, but all of a sudden I do, I do Final Fantasy VIII and I get like 400 emails. Like, my mailbox fills overnight, because apparently everyone just saw this video and was like, you gotta see this asshole. <laughs> and so, people were hating me, and I was like, if I get this kind of response from people, if I can, if I can stir this kind of emotion, I want to do this for as long as I can. And so, so that was how I got started. Uh, oh, for me, it's, it's, it's still a hobby, because I've, I've, got a, I've got another job in retail, which I work. But it started mainly because of Doug. Um, you guys might not know, when Doug was posting on YouTube, when he was just a Nostalgia Critic, when there was no That Guy With The Glasses website, Doug would have to post a Nostalgia Critic video on a channel, then start up another channel and post another video. Because YouTube kept pulling his videos down. 
And then Doug did the challenge to the ABGN and said, you know, I'm calling you out, that sort of stuff. And all those got taken down. And then James did a reply. You know, everyone who knows the feud with the, uh, with the Nostalgia Critic ABGN. James did his reply. So I went through all the comments on James's video, and most of them were saying, you know, oh, this guy sucks, this guy sucks, he sucks cocks, all this sort of stuff. He's gay, suck my cock, which I don't understand. But, um, just once. Oh. And, but then, some people were actually saying, because at this point, Doug wasn't that well known, sorry. And um, it was, who is he? So I started a YouTube channel called the Nostalgia ABGN Fan Channel, and I posted a lot of Doug's reviews that he already had on YouTube and the rants. So people would have a, a window into finding out who he was and go to the website. Then Mike Mashaw got in touch with me and he said, look, we know what you're doing. Can you put annotations all over so you can sort of direct them to the website? I started doing that. Then he got in touch with me again about a year later and said, because I started doing Nostalgia Critic trailers to sort of say, you know, new nostalgia. I wouldn't post a new Nostalgia Critic video because it's, it's ad revenue and Doug needs the ad revenue. So I started posting trailers. Then Mike got in touch with me again and he said, can you make trailers for everybody? So I made trailers for Benzai, I made trailers for Spoonie, I made trailers for Lindsay, I made trailers for everybody. And then Cole Guy, uh, who might know off the website, got in touch with me. He said, can you start editing for me? So I edited for Cole Guy. And Panda got in touch with me and said, can you edit for me? And then Matthew Buck got in touch with me and he said, can you edit for me? So I started editing for all these people and really sort of found the enjoyment in the editing process of it. And then from there, we worked with Panda, I started like finding a voice and sitting in front of the camera and talking. And that's where I sort of really found where, where I was going. And I kind of like the whole thing of like reviewing film, films I like. That's sort of what I like to do. I can't do the whole sort of angry thing. Because if I get angry, I heal a test. I get really irritating. So I just do, I just do the videos that I like. And that's, that's kind of where it started for me.